advanced mail features. Outlook 2013 also gives you options to clean up your mailbox to get rid of deleted emails and maximize the space in your Outlook program. The best way to learn what cleaning up your mailbox does is by actually learning to do it. That said, let's go to the File tab. Click on the Clean Up Tools button. You can then select if you want to manage your mailbox size, empty the deleted items folder, or archive old items to the archive folders in the folder list. Select Mailbox Cleanup. You can use the window to find old items you want to delete, large items you want to delete, archive old items, or empty the deleted items folder. When you're finished, click Close. If you have a lot of messages stored in folders, it can slow Outlook down when opening the program. Plus, they can get hard to manage no matter how organised you have them. For that reason, Outlook offers a feature called Auto Archive to archive messages so you still have them, but they're not front and centre, bogging the program and you down. Outlook 2013 does not archive your emails automatically. You have to turn on this feature yourself. You saw Auto Archive in the last section when we cleaned up our mailbox. Now let's set options for it and see how it works. First, if you want to turn on this feature and see how it's set up to archive your messages, click on the File tab and then click on Options on the left. Click on the Advanced section. Go to the Auto Archive section and click on Auto Archive Settings. In this dialog box, you can see if the Auto Archive feature is on, how often items will be archived, how old the items have to be in order to be archived, and the name and location of archived files. Now you can turn it on without changing the settings, or you can change the settings. Once you've done that, click the Apply These Settings to All Folders Now button. All folders except the contacts folder will be archived. Click OK. If you want to archive individual folders, open the mail module and go to the folder pane and click on inbox. Now go to the folders module by clicking on the three dots at the bottom and clicking on folders. You'll see the folders pane again. Now go to the folder tab and click on the auto archive settings in the properties group. This dialog box will appear. Select the second option that says archive items in this folder using the default settings. You can select archive the folder using these settings, select your settings and click apply and then OK. The out of office assistant gives you a way to arrange for Outlook to automatically respond to emails when you're away or out of the office. What's more, the assistant can be set to respond to emails only during certain periods of the day, like at lunchtime, and you can send a separate message to people inside your organisation or outside of it. Let's take a look at how this works. In order to activate the Out of Office Assistant, go to the File tab. The Info tab should already be selected, if not, go ahead and click on it. Now select the Automatic Replies or Out of Office button. If, like me, you don't see that button there, it just means that your email account does not support out of office replies. This is because I'm using an Outlook.com account which does not support it. If you do see the button, you can click on it. The out of office assistant dialog box will open. To enable the feature, simply select send automatic replies. You can also set a time and date range from here as well. To do so, simply make sure the only send during this time range checkbox is selected, and then set the start and end times. If you'd like to create one message for the people inside your organisation or company and another message for those outside your organisation, you can do so on this screen as well. To do so, simply select the appropriate tab, then enter the message you'd like to send. Don't forget to click the Apply button in order to activate your changes. The Quota Thermometer allows you to see how much free space is left in your mailbox. This feature is turned off by default, so let's turn it on to see how it works. Right click anywhere on the bottom bar in your Outlook window. You'll then see this menu. Select the Quota Information button to turn it on. If you don't have a space or size limitation on your mailbox, like I don't here, it won't turn on because it's not necessary. You'll then see how much space you have. It'll be displayed in the bottom left. PST files are simply data files in Outlook 2013. Whenever you create a file in Outlook to archive items, this is a PST file. It stands for Personal Storage Table. Here's an example. Let's say you get a lot of emails from Joe Smith and you want to save them to your Outlook instead of keeping them on the server. You create a data file called Joe Smith to keep those emails in. The folder is a PST file. It's a data file. That said, the best way to show you what a PST is so that you understand it is to create one. To create a PST file, go to the Mail module. Click on the Home tab. 
and select New Items from the ribbon. From the menu that appears, select More Items, and then select Outlook Data File. Enter a name for your PST file and then click OK. The PST is now created and appears in the Folders pane. It looks just like one of your email accounts. Now, to create storage folders, right click on the PST file and select New Folder. Now, let's say you want to find an item that you've stored in a PST. To do this, click on the File tab and click Open on the left. Select Open Outlook Data File. Select the name of the PST file, then use the search box to find what you're looking for.